activities. Uh, tonight we have third session. Before starting our third session, I want to invite also Katya, our program quality, quality director. Katya, stage is yours. Would you like to share your point of view, please? Big applause to her. Oh, okay, Katya is not available. Okay. Uh, our uh, our yes, speaker is very important for all of us. I want to uh, share his biography, please. Mohammed Ali Shukri, BTN and accredited speaker, live speaker helps organizations and individuals build better communication, positive culture, and innovative performance, especially in managing occupational safety and health and industrial sector in general. First from the Middle East to reach the World Championship of Public Speaking Finals in 2006, a speaker first and only from the Middle East, a cert certified transformational leader, MBA in transformational leadership, from United Kingdom, founder and CEO of Y Access Training Solutions Co. Uh, for tonight, I would like to thank also our district director, Francesca, program quality director, Katya, to help on this event. Thanks, uh, Harshita, Yoko, uh, and also my special thanks to Ahmed Shukri to help for tonight. The stage is yours, Mohammed. Welcome on stage with your big applause, please. Over to you. Thank you so much. I, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. And um, you, I can see you, you can see me, that's great. Thank you for the opportunity. Let's immediately start with um, a warm-up. Let's just small warm-up. I'm going to ask you all, wherever you are in your rooms, to do the following. I want you to look around. When I give you the um, signal, I want you to look around and count how many things you see with the color green, anything, whether it's clothes, piece of furniture, a small spot here and there. So, and then I'm gonna ask you um, to start and then how many have you found? Are you ready? You can open the mics because this is this. Enough for me. Yes. Yes, we hear you. Oh, yes. Okay. So we hear. So you, uh, you heard my. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. Got interrupted a bit. So now, uh, I give you the signal to start counting anything around you which is green color in your room. All right. Okay. It's fro. Okay. Go ahead. You all look frozen, but go ahead. Four for me. I have counted six. No, no, don't stop. Go ahead, find as many. All right, stop. Stop, all of you. Okay, now, my question is, at the time you were counting until now, not now, how many these things you found red? Not green, red. Before, not now. How many? Talk to me. Two. Two. Did you count them during that time or now you looked? No, just turned around so I can see two things. Two red things. Yeah, you, you, yes. But when I asked you to look for green, did you yeah. find red? Were you looking for red? No. No. So you you why didn't you look why didn't you see red at that time because i was focused on green color very good mm -hmm. so you were looking for green color and that's why you couldn't see red correct yes good so what do we learn from this exercise give me anything that you learn anyone you can jump in and answer me what is you the learning yes you see what you want you see what you want what else if you search positive things you will find positive things if you search negative things you will find negative things and if you watch with this view to your 
kid, children or menti, you will only, only find the, this thing. So you have to uh, open your view. I am in very good company and intelligent company, really. When you decide to buy a car and you decide the model and you decide the color and you go on the road, what do you see on the road? Your focus point. You always magnet and focus on the, what you're thinking, what is in your mind. So you will see only the cars. You will see so many cars that you already decided to buy. And you're like, oh my God, where were these cars all the time? In fact, they were there all the time, right? So can I end by the, th the last part? In real life, not colors. Forget green and red now. In real life, where does this apply, do you think? Do we, do we search the good things or the bad things? Both of them. So when you focus on something, you will not see other things, right? You see what is in there, not what's out there. So in real life, where does this apply in your professional life, social life, a family, work, career, Toastmasters? Give me examples. Whatever you focus, you will magnet this one in each set of each level of the our life doesn't matter professional personal each life whatever you focus you will get it exactly but you can think of spaces special areas each one of you can think of areas in your life for example if i ask you where else you can now apply then you will think of some place correct if I asked you when and what is your next step, can you think of your next step? Where do I need to apply this next? What am I missing in life because I'm focusing elsewhere? Can you share? Are you okay with this intera interaction, uh, Meltem? Are you okay with this interaction, this degree of interaction? Good? Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much, Mohammed. Okay, good, good, good. So, any one of you can think of an area which I think next, this is where I need to be more conscious. You don't need to share. You can say, yes, I have an area. I can say, yes, I have an area I need to focus on more, which I am missing. Right? All right. So because of time, let us wrap up this warm up. You have just covered everything you need to know tonight. In fact, we have covered the four hats already of proper learning, and I'm going to disclose them soon. So tonight, we have done the warm-up already. We will go through uh, uh, what is mentoring exactly. We need to place mentoring and not to look at, at it separately from everything else, because there are so many tools. Then we will learn the three elements of effectiveness if mentoring must be effective. Then I will disclose the four levels in the growth cycle. Then we will do some exercises together. And also it is good to know how not to do it. After we learn how to do it, it's also good to know how not to do it. And finally, what are the four hats before we conclude? I've I've, uh, I've been speaking for more than 30 years. When I was young, I experienced speaking very young in volunteering, in uh, occasions, community here and there. I was a good MC. Then I joined my company, and after some time, I in joined the safety department. And there, it was a big challenge for us to communicate powerfully and convince the workforce and anyone who comes into our company to stay safe, work safe, and go back home safe. This demanded high level of communication, not just normal presentation, telling people, etc. So I joined the corporate Toastmaster Club in 2004. So it's been 20 years since I joined Toastmasters. And in safety, I managed to improve myself. The only way I know, knew about learning was 
as presentations, they gave me slides, what to do in safety, what not to do, teach the contractors, teach the visitors, teach the um, employees and workers. And I did that for, a, for, for quite a long time. I thought this was training. It wasn't. Then in 2006, I managed to reach to the World Championship of Public Speaking finals in my first attempt. So the first five qualification rounds, I reached to the top 10 in Washington, D.C. In Bahrain, small island in the Gulf, this was big news. Especially, I was the first Arab in history to reach there. I didn't place. I was the fourth place I, I came to know. Next year, I went to Arizona. Again, I didn't place. Then after that, there was more demand of my training in safety. So then I left the company and trained a lot of people. I can say comfort comfortably, I trained more than 100,000 people in my life. You believe it or not? Because thousands of them already in our company. I did so many, I wore so many hats. And I came to know now after 30 years and before four years when I became an accredited speaker, what is actually I'm talking about, I'm about to tell you now. Where is mentoring in all this? I'm going to show you a number of words. Look at them. Scan them. How many of them have you done? Just throw numbers verbally to me because I don't see you now. How many of them do you do? Of course, as Toastmasters, we all do speaking, correct? Are you still with me? Yes, yes. yes. I think all of them we are doing as Toastmasters. <laughs> yes, very good, very good. That's that's the beauty of our organization. We do most of them. I, I don't claim to do all of them, especially counseling I haven't done, all right? But mentoring, it's different. Now, I think I forgot one word intentionally, and that is this word. What's the relationship between everything else and the word learning? What is the connection? A bit tricky. Learning is middle of the everything. It is middle of everything, of course. It's at heart, the heart. But what is the relationship between learning and everything else? What is the common denominator between everything else? Doing. Ing. So it means uh, that we are doing. Yeah. I think it I missed was... something. Oh, we are doing, it means that uh, it's something that is not already in the past, but it's something that is in the present. And interesting, yes, that's interesting. What else? Yeah, while doing all these things, uh, we are in the process of learning itself. Beautiful, so... a beautiful one, yes. So let's think of a student or mentee, okay? When we mentor someone, that's the act we are doing to him, right? We are mentoring someone so that they, what? They learn, correct? So everything you see in this cloud actually is only, they are only tools. They are only techniques. They are only methods and they are only means to an end. The end result is learning. Now we must focus on the word learning because globally, even in our organization, it is the globally, internationally, in all awarding bodies, in all educational schemes and systems, learning is the key word, okay? If you are in education like I am now, it's also part of the uh, quality assurance in educational sectors everywhere. And we must know that learning is the goal. Training is only 
a way to reach to that goal. Sometimes you do training only. Sometimes you do facilitating. Sometimes you do speaking. But the goal is not to do these things. These are just acts. Success is determined, is measured, whether the audience has learned or not. Success in mentoring is measured whether the mentee has learned or not. Can we agree on this? Now, if you open any course or qualification, they do not write the training outcomes. They don't write the training outcomes. They write the learning outcomes. I want to see your impact on the student. And it, can, it must be measurable. We are not going there now. It must be measurable. So now, all of these things are to reach learning. Tonight, we are talking how to make the mentor, how the mentor can make the mentee learn. Okay? Now, there is a difference between mentoring and training and facilitating and counseling and coaching. We are not going to compare now. This is not our job tonight, all right? But I'll give you what mentoring is, and you can compare with others. Mentoring is holding the hand. Okay, mentoring is holding the hand of the mentee in every stage based on the mentor's previous past experience. Do this, don't do this, now do this. Oh, you made a mistake, I will help you raise, rise, okay? So a mentor takes you in every step based on his learning, all right? He is not a trainer who will teach you something and say goodbye. He is not a speaker who will show you the way and say goodbye. He is with you all the way. That is what mentoring is in a nutshell, in, a, in simple words. Now, this is the mentoring, and everything else is a method. Can I hear yes if you have listened to me until now? Yes. 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 Good. Yes. All right. Now let's go to the goal, learning. How do you know people have learned? How do you know the mentee has learned? Just because he said, yes, you have touched my heart. Yes, this is the best course ever. Yes, I loved your speech. These are brothers and sisters. They are, these are not in any way evidence of learning. These are just reflections. These are just uh, responses, okay? And they are not lying, but a good teacher, a good trainer, a good speaker, a good coach, a good mentor has his or her ways of measuring learning. Learning, the full learning, can happen through three things, all right? If a person really learned, your learning must cover three elements. What did he learn? What is the substance, the subject? What is the matter, okay? What is the content, information, facts? This is the knowledge part, what? Number two, why? Because mentoring is for adults, adults will not learn without knowing why. There is a difference between adult learning and young learners. Young learners is called pedagogy. You can look it up. Adults, it's called andragogy. There are big differences between them. Motivation is different. The why is different. An adult learner must know why am I learning this, or they will not stay there. Therefore, in your teaching, in your speaking, in your training, in your mentoring, make sure you not only put what, but you also put why is this good for you. And number three, how. The skill, how will I do it? Teach me, not only show me, let me do it. Let me do it in your presence until you are sure I have done it. So when you do your mentoring make or teaching or training, make sure you give the what knowledge, the why, okay? And also the how and the practice. Exactly like your driving license. You have learned driving, right? Of course. Otherwise, you don't have your license in your pocket or in your car. 
How do you know you have learned? Because you know what, you know why, and you know how. Otherwise, the government or traffic directory will not give you that license. That's, to me, one of the most ideal learnings in our lives. It's perfect. Now, how can we make this happen for mentoring, okay? I said that Adults are different than young people. The advantage with this part is three elements. What are the three elements of effectiveness? I still did not come to the four hats. Three elements. When it comes to adults, adults have prior experience. My little child who goes to school does not have prior experience to build upon. The adult has a lot of experiences, events, studying, and life events, and many things happened, all right? So these experiences, they build on it, they reflect on it. You cannot just go to the adult, adult and mentor them without using their experience. This is an advantage for you. If you mentor a Toastmaster, look at their past experiences, try to build on them because it is never separated so that's number one the second element and i call it also an advantage with this uh, cycle um, which i'm going to disclose is self-awareness a mentor a good mentor when he uses the model i'm about to share with you he will achieve self-awareness self-awareness means i wasn't aware that I am so good. I wasn't aware that I am not so good in speaking. I wasn't aware that I always say a lot of us and ums, us and ums. Remember, the R counter in our meetings brings us to awareness. When the R counter gives her report on R counting, what do you do? Oh, no, oh my God, I didn't say eight us and ums. It's fun but it's also awareness. Without awareness, people will not learn. Without giving them their true level, true level, a good mirror. In Toastmasters, we should be a good mirror, constructive feedback, but also real. Otherwise, if we always praise them, always whitewash, they will never be aware of their level and they think it's enough i'm doing well according to my mentor according to my club members i'm really good that's not what we should do that's not good mentoring number three and this is my favorite genuine commitment when you are with your mentee they will learn they will show you they have learned maybe they have really mastered but how much commitment they will they will give to their learning there is a rule in adult learning says, peop, uh, people are more committed, people are more committed to the data that they produce. Meaning, if you spoon feed people information, they will say, okay, okay, I will eat it. But you, you're, you're just spoon feeding them, right? That's not, that's not what they cooked. This is what you cooked because you are master, you are mentor, you have been there, you're more experienced. You should listen to me, right? That's our attitude. Trust me, I believe you. Uh, sorry, trust me, I know what's working for you. That's spoon feeding. They have done nothing. They are passive. They are listening. They're saying, okay, inshallah, thank you. Okay, I will do whatever you say. So that's not commitment. Many times when we give rules to the employees, or to our children when we give them rules at house, which we should, by the way. Many times it's forced, okay? When it's forced, commitment is only due to fear or due to love, I don't know what. But commitment will be higher if you let them reach to the conclusion, not you reach to the conclusion. Don't give them ready conclusion. So these are the three things. It will be clear now when we do the exercises, all right? So three elements in adult learning, because mentoring is adult learning. Learner's experience matters a lot. 
self awareness let them be aware of where they are even if they are shocked it's good it's part of the learning and number three let them contribute to the learning let them reach to the conclusions and i will show you how to do in the four steps as we explain now all right are we good are we ready for the four steps yes yes yes, yes. all right good so this model is called the experiential learning of course you have come across this in a way or another it's by david kolb and it's not mine even david kolb says it's not mine it's how life works david kolb says in his fury in 18, 1985 that everybody learns through experience our learning in life the best learnings in our, our life was through experience good or bad doesn't matter but we learn through experience i have graduated from electrical engineering but guess what i knew nothing until i joined the aluminium smelter and the power station power generation everything i came to know only in work not in college of course I managed to pass college because I did well anyway. I didn't do that, that well anyway. <laughs> but all of us learn in the school of life because we experience. Good? All right. So David Cobb says everybody learns through experience. If your sessions as a facilitator, as a trainer, even as a speaker, you take the audience, the listener, the mentee, the coachee, the protege, if you take them through experience, then they will learn because that's the rule of life. We learn through experiences. Even if there are no teachers in our life, we never met a teacher. The experiences of, of our life will teach us. Okay, they will bump us, they will hit us, we will get wounded, but we will learn eventually. And for many of us, we know that the experience will repeat will repeat until we learn all right and some people some people never learn <laughs> all right but life is designed like this we are wired to learn from experience however now you are a mentor and she is a mentee how do you make sure the experience works just going through an experience throwing someone in the swimming pool is not enough you should know for the experience to reach to the goal of learning, there are four steps. And David Kolb explains them. And here are the four steps. Step number one, concrete raw experience. The mentee goes through an experience and we will give applications shortly, all right? After the experience, the mentee should step back and reflect what happened, why it happened like this, all right? Number three, after the observation, the mentee will say, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, I learned something. And that something is, so you create a rule, not you. The mentee creates a rule, creates a concept. But that concept is abstract. It's only a rule and still here or on paper. I need to use it in my life. After I learn this th through the hard way, I need to apply it actively in my life, okay? So these are the four steps. And next time I need to apply it. There are short words for it. For step number one, concrete experience, let the mentee go through the experience. Do not interfere. Do not mess with him. Let them go through the feeling. The feeling is very important for the mentee. Do not try to correct things okay sometimes you need to adjust only but as a mentee this is where you let them feel and then the experience is over for example the speech has been done you sit and you just ask uh watch what did you do let him watch let him do the replay and reflect observations only no evaluation only analysis and then then you ask, what did you reach? What is the concept? Let them bring the learning. And finally, where, the, where, what will you do with this learning now in the next speech? Good? 
Did we do this today? Yes, we did this today. And step number one, at the beginning of the session, I ask you, count everything green. And then I said, stop. How many did you see red? You were shocked. Now, when we finished the experience, all everything was over, you were busy. You don't think. You are fully engaged. You are going through the feeling. You are counting things that are green. And then well, I stopped you. I said, okay, what happened? Why didn't you find enough threads? You gave me observations. You gave me observations. And then I said, okay, what is the learning? And I heard a couple of good rules, good laws, good principles from you, not from me. And then I asked you, can we apply this in real life? Where in our real life? And you answered. Some of you answered here. You didn't have the time. I didn't give you the time because of, of the limitation of this workshop. But this is where I asked different set of questions. Where can you this apply this next? So these are the four levels that learning will happen. And notice. All the information came from me or from you. I need an answer. Yes. Did the information come from me or from you? All the questions I asked, but the answers came from me or from you? Answers from us. The answers are from you. So the mentee is doing the job. The mentee is going through the experiment. The mentee is answering, is observing. The mentee is giving the learning concepts and the mentee decides what to do with his life. Our session in that game was a full learning. Good, that was only a small sample. If we do like this with everything, then people will learn from us. If we drop anyone, then the learning will be incomplete. If I try to interfere all the time and I want to teach him and I'm not patient, I say, no, 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 not, that's not the way, don't do like this. They will not learn. I will just bombard the mentee with my information and, and experience. What's the use? Okay. All right. So let us apply this now. We will apply this and then we wrap up. Okay. Let's do some applications together. First of all, parenting. Some of you here are parents already. I know at least uh, Harshita. I know at least I saw her beautiful daughter also. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> so when we have children, okay, and it happened to me. And I told my daughter many times, don't touch. It's hot. And it's, it's a hot pot. Okay. And imagine she comes there and she wants to see what's cooking for lunch after school. And many times I told her it's hot, but she's young, small. So she touches and her hand is burning. And she cries, oh, mama, etc. you know, mama, daddy, okay. And her hand is, and she's crying because it's a hot surface, right? Although I told her many times. So she goes through what? Number one, she goes through the experience. The experience is done. Now her hand is burning or she is in pain. What shall I do as a parent? You tell me, what shall I do? What do you parents do usually? You tell me, what do they do? Right? <laughs> how many times I told you, how many times I, of course, I, we say it out of love, but how many times I told you, which part are we doing? We are doing part number three. We are skipping part number two. We are skipping step number two. A parent, which wants, if you want your child to learn, you go to step number two. Reflective observation. What shall I tell my daughter now? What shall I do? Come on, this is part of mentoring. This is very good for those masters. Come on. What did you what, learn? What did you learn is which step? Step number three. What did you learn is a step number three. 
they will not learn immediately. You need to capture number two. It is reflection. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't uh, think before doing anything, you will get hurt. Again, you are giving information. I'm interfering. Yes. You I'll ask. Be... How, you ask how how he's feeling about that. Who was that? Who was that? Amber. Amber. Very good, Amber. So you ask. How do you feel? Already you know she's burning, right? She's in pain. What's happening, darling? What's happening? Where? What is what happened? You let her replay. I touched this and it was burning. She's answering. Let her answer. Okay. Oh, and why is it burning? Because I cannot withstand. Okay. Okay. And how do you feel? See, see, you go through this and you capture the feelings now all right it's it's very important before go, you go to learning and then you go to step number three and you ask her so why did the hot pot after of course you do first aid and everything and she's good now you ask her why did it hurt you because it is hot and hot surfaces is burning us not good for our skin no why not good you ask it like this, why not good? Because I am weak, it is weak. This is iron, this is fire, and this is skin. So that means that hot surface, hot iron, will always burn our hands. Yes, mama, yes, mama, it will always burn our hands. So she reached to a law, a conclusion, a concept. Good she has reached so you're saying that this is burning me okay so next time what will you do honey i will never touch a hot only only the hot hot pot what else even that hot uh, uh kettle i will not touch what else even fire i will not touch even hot pipe i will not touch see she is producing information if we do like this with our children, they will really learn, but it requires patience and requires consciousness in the four steps because humans only learn like this. Okay? Now let's imagine there is no parent. Let's go into relationships. No parent. Will I learn without a teacher, a facilitator, or trainer? What if I go through a hard time a toxic person a narcissist who comes in my life mm -hmm. we have all experienced some toxic people different levels different some some of them are close some of them are far but we know we are not safe when we are with, with them we feel insecure with them and some of us go deep into that relationship until a lot of damage has been done to our to us to our to our soul to our life good so that is the concrete experience. The problem is many of us meet another person who is toxic. It's not the same person, but another person comes. And then a third person comes in your life. And you're thinking, what's wrong with me? Am I a magnet? for bad, negative, toxic people. Maybe it's me. Good. So this person goes through the experience and does not learn. You say, what do you say usually? You say you have not learned from the experience. Yes, you're right. They didn't learn. Why they didn't learn? Because they didn't go through the four steps. They only meet the bad person. They go out. They blame the world. They blame the other people. People are bad but they don't stop and observe. But after time, they will stop and observe. If you have gone through bad, toxic people, then you will, at one stage, you will sit down, you will think, and you have done this before. Why is this happening to me? Now you have gone to step number two. What's the common thing that happened between all these people? Which part of me, which weak part of me, they are tapping on. For example, me being too nice, according to many people, I have uh, sold myself very low in so many business 
connections. It happens to us. If you read for Louise Hay, people who undervalue themselves, they sell their products cheap, by the way. That's one, one, one sign. Let's not go deep there. But after some time, I see what's, which part of me are they misusing, abusing. Then you find a thread, a pattern. Aha. Uh -huh. That means whenever it comes to being kind, they are using this part of me. Aha. Uh -huh. So that means I need to be more strict, nice with people, kind to people, but not too nice. I need to be. So I'm reaching to a learning. I learn. The next time, I'm more aware. Next time, next person, I am very careful. I'll not treat them bad, but I will not abuse myself. You with me, everybody? You with me? Happens in life, right? So even in relationships, even when there is no mentor, you will learn from life like this. Every day we go through experiences, small and big. But those who pay attention and reflect, they will learn more. All right. Let me go to the final stage. What about Toastmasters? If we have a mentee and they have what? Icebreaker? Okay, icebreaker. Let them go through the experience. Many of us know. Many of us want to polish their mentee, make them ready, make them f as perfect, as polished as possible. Even the, me the, the member comes to you and checks the speech several times, right? And please check it for me. Please watch me. I want to do many rehearsals. It is not recommended to do that. It is not recommended. Let the mentee go through the experience, in the icebreaker, I mean, at least, all right? And then let them be in self-awareness. Let them be shocked. 20 years ago, I was a good speaker when I joined Toastmaster. I told you already I was volunteering a lot. My icebreaker was a piece of cake. I thought so. But before I reached to the middle of my speech, I saw the red light. I was in shock. Uh, and that was to me the biggest learning, self-awareness. Then you reflect, let them reflect what happened, what went well, what didn't go good. Okay, you tell, you, you ask, let them answer. And then what did they, what do you learn? And if you want to polish the learning, it's okay. But let them contribute to the learning. I should make sure, I should pay attention to time more. I should do this. See, if they do this, you don't speed, spoon feed them, they will be committed to learning. Always it's like this, organizational, like this. I am in organizational culture. I did my MBA on uh, uh, behavioral uh, safety behavior, a, a project. And when we made people own the process, own the process, own the learning, we had better results in reducing the accidents and improving safety performance and attitudes for a longer term. The old way is to tell people to do this, tell people not to do this, tell, 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 it's not working. All right? Okay. So here we go. We have applications. I hope I have more time. I wish I wasn't in my vacation, otherwise we can do more interactively. But I'm sure with the recording and with the interactions we have reached. So we give three layers now for Toastmasters. Uh, now, how not to do it? Because sometimes we will learn by the wrong way. So I'll give you quickly, quickly wrong ways to do it. Number one, as a mentor, if your mentee goes through the experience and then nothing, I don't do any reflection, I don't sit with them to think, and, and, and this is called total ignorance. Is this happening or not? It shouldn't happen because mentorship in Toastmaster means you are with them before, during, and after before you prepare them and during the process let them go through a concrete experience with your observation and supervision and then after they finish you should follow up you should check on them pick up the phone 
have a meeting one-on-one, -on -one, have a call, I don't know. But if we leave people join Toastmasters, the, the membership, the vice president membership done the job, the treasurer got the money, that's it. Let him fall, let him go online, let the, the member go through the pathways, he will know. If he has a question, I will answer. That is not mentoring because it lacks the three other steps. Uh, are, are we clear with this? Is that a good example in Toastmasters? It happens sometimes, many times, but we don't want it to happen with us if I am the mentor. Next, how not to do it? Another example, and it gets tricky. What if a mentor jumps immediately to step number three? Who is that? This is a mentor who has so many things to say, who finally we give him a mentee, who is, who wants to, you know, sincerely wants to guide and help. So he pours his information and he forces food into the head of the mentee. Don't do this, don't do this. Let me teach you. Uh, I will tell you how it worked with me. I was here 10 years and I did this and I will, you know, lecturing, you know. So what, what, uh, what do we call these people? All right. We call this, this, we call this preaching. He doesn't care if you go through the experience, even if you go through the experience or the speech, he just wants to you to come back after the meeting and sit and lecture you, lecture you, lecture you. So this is when we when we look at the model and we see people like this, we know that they are doing step number three. This is the this is the goal of our uh, session today to know what people do and where does it fall exactly. So there are people like this. They give little importance to the other steps and they think telling, lecturing, preaching will do the work. It doesn't. Although preaching has its place. We respect all that. It has its place, but not in mentoring. All right? Third step, it's getting trickier now. What if people do this and this? What do we call this? Yes, I'll give you a minute. What do we call this? There is a category of educators, quote unquote, follow only one and three. And it's in our educational system, by the way. So teachers and trainers, I'm, I'm sorry to say, not as teachers and trainers, just quote unquote, they take the students through a concrete experience. Sometimes it's called an activity or a game, right? Okay, do this. Here are the balloons. Here are, do this game. And when they finish, they ask, what did we learn? Uh-uh. Be careful. That's our tendency as teachers. We do a beautiful game, team building game. We do circles, we dance, I don't know, whatever we do. And then we go for debrief. We call it debrief in training. In debriefing, you don't ask, what did we learn? It's wrong. You have to go for number two first. How did we feel? What happened? What went wrong? What went well? But we don't do that because we as teachers, we want to teach. So that's the negative teaching. And because in schools we have so many kids in one class, there is no time to go through reflection. And there is no time to do in concrete experience for every student. It's cheaper to do this way. That's why our schools, the only motivation for my daughter and my son is exams. What will happen to me if I don't remember the knowledge? What will happen to me if I don't? Recall the information, I will recall, but only for that. So this is called teaching, but not the negative teaching. Okay, I hope, please record that. And the program is recording. That's not original teaching. That's the teaching in a 
wrong way. I have, I, I teach, uh, I train trainers program called International Award and Delivering Training from Highfield, UK. I have just finished 45 batches in my past 10 years. And I learned a lot about what teaching and training is according to the international standards. And it has to go through, through the four steps as much as you can. Time will not permit you to always do it. But don't ignore that learning will only happen. People will only learn if they go through these steps. They will not go alone. They cannot, they don't know these four steps. But you as a mentor, you as a trainer, you, you as a facilitator, you know these four steps. So make sure you cover them, not just do the experience. Don't let your member or mentee just do the speech and the, no, let them go through the old steps. So I promised you, so these are how not to do it. I promised you that the four hats are what? What are the four hats? We know that they are these four steps, but I said hats. So let me give you the hats now before we conclude. The hats are already in this page. The four steps, each one has a hat. You will wear one of these hats at each stage. So for step number one, there is a hat. Which one is it, you think? When you let your students, uh, your mentee go through the experience, you are wearing which hat as a mentor? Anyone? Facilitating. Good, facilitating, <laughs> good. So in part number one, you are facilitating. Then when you step back, and you are, want him to observe, and you ask questions so that they analyze what happened. You are a what? You're wearing which hat? Moderating. Mm. Coaching. Coaching. Um coaching so step number two when you sit back and ask your mentee so what happened how did you feel what went well mm -hmm. okay why is that okay so that's coaching right there are coaches in the room i am sure step number three when you want them to learn and give them the concept not give them bring the concept out of them what did you learn what did you learn what is the rule of life now what's something you can squeeze out of this experience what did you learn you are doing which hat i said it already in the previous Edu slide educating but I, Edu say, I say educating because the original meaning is from the latin ex ducere to pull out so that's why i say educating beautiful beautiful Thank you so much. I said teaching, but I'm learning something from you now, uh, Katya, I think. Educating, and I will look it up. Thank you for this extra information. So the real teaching, it comes here, but you take the information out or you are educating. And finally, number four, I'm challenging you all. Number four, when you tell them, where else in your life can you apply? Which part of your life can you apply the rule? What are you doing now? You are wearing which hat? Is counseling? Um, close, you are yeah. close. It's corporate. It's, it's corporate. Yeah. I call it consulting, okay? Why? Because consultants actually do not stop at the learning. They, they make the company or the client teach them how to apply when they go back to work, all right? As a trainer, if you have a training workshop, uh, that's an extra tip. Don't only be happy and be satisfied with them learning the concepts inside the class. Tell them when you finish the workshop, show me your action plan. Whatever we learn here, whether it's team building, time management, whether it's customer service, or even as technical as auditing, etc., You tell them, whatever we learn in these two days, 
give me a list where can you apply them at your work because you're not going with them to work you ask them where at your work and let them list and let them share this is closing the cycle so ladies and gentlemen bravo good job these are the four hats and they come here number one you are a facilitator number two you are a coach number three you are a teacher and number four your consultant bravo and bravo to me because i pulled out the information from you not from me correct correct do i get a point for that <laughs> okay. yes <laughs> okay yes. Yes. before the before the end of year the year my book is coming out it's called you are the the title is you are the one and only it is something i went through uh an incident i went through in 2013 it was a turning point which changed my life totally and since 2014 until now 10 years i have been delivering this program signature one of my signature programs in different districts and the tagline says unleash your new niche discover the power of combining your diverse skills and experiences to achieve extraordinary success. It is debating the conventional wisdom, which says a jack of all trades is a master of none. Well, nobody read the rest by uh, William Shakespeare. A jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. That's not the main debate, but the debate is, are you a generalist or a specialist? Is there something in between or even larger? Yes, there is. And I discovered it. And since then, I have been sharing this concept, the one and only factor. The fact that each one of you is unique, not only through the fingerprints or the face bios or everything physical or psychological, but actually your life combined together, everything together, all together makes you unique not one thing and i've been sharing this and transforming so many audiences it became a course it became a program and keynotes in districts across the world the one and only and it's based on that concept experience i hope i can share the book with you before the end of the year please stay tuned you can follow me on linkedin but uh all that concept following 2013 helped me coming up come up with what's unique about me and not to do and not to be everything for everyone no so all my signature programs as a speaker and as a trainer got some place in different with different clients and these are some of the products and they are unique in their own area so don't seek to be the best or to be the first, just be the one and only, be the only one. And it's based on all your life, not one thing, okay? So conclusion is, before I leave you, and before we go to the question and answers, if there is time, is it green or is it red? <laughs> no, it's four colors. It's all these colors, it's all these steps as a mentor. I promise you, slowly, slowly adopt this as a mentor, as a parent, as a manager, as a team leader, as a club officer, as a district leader, and as a person even for yourself. Watch these things in your life and you will learn the best way. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mohamed. We really, really appreciate your participation and I'd like to say a big thanks. Also because maybe not only are aware that for you today was a miracle to be here. I mean, your effort to be here was really, really exceptional. So thank you so much and thank My you pleasure. to to organize this amazing workshop now for our district knows you better and maybe we can keep in touch and thank you again for your amazing tips about mentoring i learned something new 
and right. So thank you also for everyone that was able to join because the original meeting was in another link, but for organization reason, it was the only way to have this meeting tonight. So thank you all that you changed your plan and you are here with us. Melton, if you can say something more. I want to thank Sevat Muhammad Ali. Uh, thank you so much. It is an uh, amazing session. Our next session will be Francesco Fedele on October 24. Each peer-to-peer uh, -peer mentoring session, we celebrate our club birthdays. I want to mention them. UBS Rhetoric Club, Blue Danube Speakers, Toastmasters Rhetoric Club, Anadolu Toastmasters, Club de Lebanda Norte, Ankara Collegeler, Toastmasters. We want to celebrate our club's birthday. And uh, since their first day until today, if I miss any club, I apologize. We wish success to all members. So congratulations, uh, our trainer and all attendees. And congratulations, Melton, for this amazing <laughs> achievement to have this kind of guest tonight with us. So congratulations, Hall. And I did if the I video. I did the video. I mean, this was also the reason why my video was off because I 